Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 39 of my Java video tutorial series. Today, I'm going to cover the J Editor pane, which is a really neat component that allows you to pretty much do anything with HTML inside of it. And not only will it open up these individual files, this is just a straight HTML file, but to a certain extent, it will also open up web pages. So I'm just going to go usa.today.com. What you have to understand is it does not understand CSS, or it does to a certain extent, and it does not understand JavaScript. So that's the reason why everything is all fouled up here. But we can scroll through here and just click on randomness. And it will actually open up web pages inside of here. It has no problem with HTML, just has problems with CSS. I'll cover that later on in the tutorial, but let's get into the code. All right, today I'm going to actually kind of program the way I really do. So I'm just going to go public class Java lesson 39 extends J frame. Since I'm going to be working with swing, I'm going to need to do this. Now I'm going to implement hyper link listener. See, all I have to do here is remember that I'm going to want to be working with hyperlinks and Java is going to go get me the right library. And I also want to track any events that are triggered on any of my components in my swing. And then I just hover up here to JFrame, for example, and just go import JFrame, hover over hyperlink listener, click on import hyperlink listener, and then hover over action listener and click on that. And there you can see it went and loaded in all my libraries. Now action listener, like I said before, is going to listen for different events on components in my little swing frame that I create. JFrame creates the window or the frame, whatever you want to refer to it as. Hyper link listener is going to monitor user activity with any links that are clicked on or hovered over inside of my J editor pane that I'm going to be able to create here. Then I'm just going to come in here and go public static void main string args right like this. And then I'm going to go new Java lesson 39. And by default, it's going to open up a file, which I went and copied and pasted. So I have to type that out. It's just a standard HTML file, as you can see there. And all of the code is available underneath this video, as well as this HTML file that's right here. And that is all I'm going to do is call the constructor for this guy. So of course, I'm going to need to create it, but I'm going to create some other things. I'm going to go string default URL. This is going to hold my default URL that we're going to be using. I also know I need a J panel and I'm just going to call it tool panel. I'm going to say equals to new J panel, right like this. And I'm also going to need a text field. The URL is what I'm going to call it. I'm going to say new J text field. And I'm just going to guess that we're going to need 25 spaces there. And then since this is a J editor pane tutorial, I'm going to put that in there and I'm going to call it HTML page. Now I can just come in here like I did before and go import J panel, import J text field, and import J editor pane. Then I'm going to need to create my constructor since I went and created it here or called for it. So Java lesson 39 and I'm going to pass it a string which is going to be default URL whenever it's called. And that's this guy right here, this file that we put in here. And then what do I need to do? Well, I need to create a frame that's going to open up everything on the screen. So I'm going to call that JFrame is equal to new JFrame. And I'm just going to call this Java browser. Now I don't want you to think of this as being limited in that it doesn't work with CSS and JavaScript. Think of it instead that it is a lot more powerful than a JText field because it allows you to do HTML editing. That's the way to look at it. Glass half full. Close operation. JFrame. Exit on close. Handle closing it whenever they click and say they want to get rid of it. Then I'm going to go this default URL is equal to the default URL that this was passed. Then I need to figure out what I want to do with my text field or how I want to call up my web pages. Well, what I decided to do, the text field's called the URL. So I'm going to say the URL and I want to add an action listener to it. And that just basically means that I want to be alerted whenever somebody interacts with my text field area. And then I can just say this, which is a reference to this object that we've created in here. I'd also like to have some default text in there. So let's say to, uh, set text to whatever default URL is. Again, that's for my text field. And then I'm going to go tool panel dot add the URL. I'm adding this to a panel, even though it is an individual component, just because I plan on maybe adding a back button or a forward button or whatever to this guy. And it just makes sense for me to do that. So I'm going to go frame then add. This is the window itself. I'm going to say tool panel. And where do I want it to go? I want it to go in the north part of this border layout. Now, of course, it's going to say, oh, but you forgot to bring this in. So I'm just going to go import border layout, 
And I like to list all of my libraries that I'm using. Some people don't. You can do whatever you want. Well, then what do I need to do? Well, I'm going to create a try block here for myself because I have to create all kinds of different interactions so that my J editor pane is going to have the URL that I want to display inside of it. So I'm going to go HTML page, which is the name for my J editor pane. Default URL is the string that I'm going to pass to it. Then I have to handle what happens whenever the user interacts with this J editor pane. So I'm going to go HTML page and I'm going to add a hyperlink listener to this guy and this is going to automatically handle any interaction that is done with my JEditor pane in regards to hyperlinks, which means basically it's gonna take them to whatever page it says. Up next, since I'm going to be working with web pages that I am not going to edit somewhat, I'm going to set editable to false. If this is set to true and you go to a regular website page, all kinds of havoc is going to ensue. However, if you have access to the page you're working with, of course you can set this to true. And then since I wanna be able to scroll through the guy, I'm gonna create a J scroll pane is equal to new J scroll roll pane like that. And then I'm just going to say HTML page. I want to put my J editor pane inside of this scroll pane. And of course, again, it's saying, oh, but you didn't put this library in here. No problem. Just click on that. And then to my frame or my window or whatever you want to call it, I'm going to go add and I'm going to say scroller and I'm going to go border layout center. And that's going to put everything in the center of the frame. Now, since I put this inside of a try block, of course, that means I need a catch area. So I'm going to go catch IO exception E in this situation, and I'm just going to go E print stack trace. And actually, a more simplistic way to do this is to start typing all this code in here and don't use the try block. Then it will automatically pull up the right exception. Next time I do this, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And then I need to say, hey, frame, I want you to be a very specific size, and that is 1200 pixels wide by 800 pixels tall. And also, frame, I want to set visible to true. I want you to show yourself. Okay, so now what do I need? Well, I could sit and look at APIs trying to figure out since I'm going to be implementing these different interfaces up here exactly which ones I need, or I could just come up here to where this is and say add unimplemented methods and let Java do it for me. And it's telling me I need action performed created and I also need hyperlink update. See, I don't have to memorize all kinds of things. Actually, I'm gonna take this guy right here, cut it out, put it down here just because I like it down there instead. Then I'm gonna perform a couple little checks here. So I'm gonna say if, I'm gonna go e dot get event type. Basically, I'm just saying, hey, okay, what sort of event type happened? I'm gonna go hyperlink event. Obviously, it's a hyperlink, so it's a hyperlink event. And I'm going to say event type, and I want to check if it's been activated or it's been clicked on. That's what I'm looking for. You could also, if you wanted to find out if it was hovered over, you could type in event type entered. Or if you wanted to see if they, actually I didn't spell that right, entered like that. Or if you wanted to find out if they left the hyperlink, you could type exited. That means if they hovered over it and then left. Like I said before, all this code is underneath this video. So then we're going to come in here and we're going to go html page which is the name of my j editor pane and i'm going to say set page and what do i want to set it to well i want to figure out what the url is so i'm just going to go hyperlink event which means the hyperlink that was clicked on and i want to get the url for the link that was clicked on and then make sure that this url is displayed on the screen then after I do that i'm going to go the url which is my text field i'm going to go e dot get url again and get that url for that thing that was clicked on and i'm going to go to external form and what to external form does is it creates a string representation for my url which is convenient because that's exactly what i'm holding there and then i'm just going to click over here set that to set page and then if i hover over this it's saying underneath here surround with a try catch block so I'm just going to click on that. See, now it went in there and created the IO exception for me, so I don't have to worry about it. So that's kind of handy. And I'm just going to leave it that way. Then I'm going to come down here where action performed is. And this is going to be called whenever my text field is clicked on. So I'm going to go string page URL is equal to nothing. Then I'm going to go and figure out exactly what was clicked on. So how did I do that? Get source, of course, because that's what you call whenever you're working with any type of event. Then I'm going to say if what triggered this action here was the URL, which is the name of my text field that I created, I want to perform certain actions. I want to go page url is equal to the url get text which is basically just getting the text that's in the text field however 
if the thing that was clicked on or whatever some sort of action occurred here that didn't involve my text field I want to print out an error and I'm going to use J option pane open up a little alert box show message dialog Java lesson 39 dot this comma and then I'm going to say please enter a web address in that situation and I'm going to say put a little error message there and then I'm also going to go J option pane and state that this is an error message so that it looks the way I want it to and then I'm going to come up here again J option pane hover and go import J option pane then scroll this up I'm going to go HTML page call set page this is going to set the URL to be displayed inside of again my J editor pane and I'm going to say new URL and get the page URL Remember, what they did was they interacted in some way with my text field, okay? So that's why I'm going to be executing certain things whenever the text field has been messed with, meaning they type in a link and they hit enter or whatever they do. And I'm going to surround it again with a try catch block. And you can see here it put both of the potential exceptions that could be thrown, which is awesome. So what am I going to do? I'm going to copy this J option pane and I'm going to show them a different error message, J option pane. And more than likely the error is going to be, please use HTTP colon. Now I could have caught this in some other way, but whatever. I'm just doing this in this tutorial. And I'm going to make sure that they put HTTP colon forward slash forward slash inside of here. And that is it. That is how to create one of these guys. Go get the code. Go, it's underneath the video. Pull in the HTML file I used and mess around with uh, the J editor pane to see all the different functionality available. It's actually a very, very, very nice underused tool. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.